This is the Daily Poem on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I am Joshua Gibbs, filling in for David Kern. My latest book is Something They Will Not Forget, a handbook for classical teachers, and it is available now on the Circe website. Today I'm going to read Horseflies by contemporary poet Robert Wrigley. This poem won the Pushcart Prize in 2005. Horseflies. After the horse went down, the heat came up. And later that week, the smell of its fester yawed, an open mouth of had been air. Our local world was licked inside of, and I, the boy who'd volunteered at twilight. Shunts of chawed cardboard wadded up my nostrils and a dampened bandana over my nose and mouth. I strode then into the ever purpler sink of rankness and smut, a sloshful five-gallon bucket of kerosene in my right hand, a smoking railroad fuse in my left, and it came over me like water then. Into my head gaps and gum rinds, into the tear ducts and taste buds, and even into the last dark tendrils of my howling, agonized hair that through the windless half-light hoped to fly from my very head and would have, I have no doubt, had not the first splash of kerosene launched a seething skin of flies into the air and onto me, the cloud of them so dense and dark, my mother in the distance saw smoke and believed, as she had feared I would, that I had set my own fool and staggering self aflame. And therefore she fainted and did not see how the fire kicked the other billion flies airborne exactly in the shape of the horse itself, which rose for a brief quivering instant under me, and which for a pulse thump at least I rode in a livery of iridescence in a mail of exoskeletal facets, wielding a lance of swimming lace, just as night rode the light and the bones and a sweet cleansing smoke to ground. Robert Wrigley was my poetry teacher in college. And he was one of the most um, profitable professors I had at the University of Idaho. He was uh, curmudgeonly. He was honest. And did not suffer fools gladly. He was the only teacher I had in college who I ever saw reduce a student to tears. And... What a lot of writing professors did at the U of I was encouraged and extolled the virtues of whatever terrible workshop piece was set before them. But uh, if your poem was no good, Robert Wrigley would tell you so. Um, so it's this uh, very brusque individual who I hear reading this poem whenever, whenever I hear it or whenever I read it. And he had this really gravelly voice like this. And he was funny because he was brutal. And he kind of knew he was brutal. And a lot of his humor and his brutality is, is present in this poem. Um, there's something uh, absolutely transcendent by the, in the denouement of this poem when, when this horse made of flies flies and this boy on this suicide mission um, rides this horse of flies for half a second. And any time that you, you have that kind of transcendent moment captured, uh, there is a tenderness to it. Um, because every human encounter with the transcendent, uh, no matter how violent, um, no matter how horrifying, uh, is really about awe and desperation. And to record the awe and desperation of another human being is to feel pity for them. 
And so while this poem is, is somewhat brutal, it's a little grotesque, uh, there's a tenderness in it which, um, which you cannot help but notice uh, once you realize that the author of the poem has created this profound and beautiful moment for this boy to enjoy. Horseflies by Robert Wrigley After the horse went down, the heat came up, and later that week the smell of its fester yawed in open mouth of had-been air our local world was licked inside of. And I, the boy who'd volunteered at twilight, shunts of chawed cardboard watered up my nostrils, and a dampened bandana over my nose and mouth. I strode then into the ever-purpler sink of rankness and smut, a sloshful five-gallon bucket of kerosene in my right hand, a smoking railroad fuse in my left, and it came over me like water then, into my head gaps and gum rinds, into the tear ducts and taste buds, and even into the last dark tendrils of my howling, agonized hair that through the windless half-light hoped to fly from my very head. And would have, I have no doubt, had not the first splash of kerosene launched a seething skin of flies into the air, and on to me the cloud of them so dense and dark, my mother in the distance saw smoke and believed, as she had feared I would, that I had set my own fool and staggering self aflame, and therefore she fainted and did not see how the fire kicked the other billion flies airborne exactly in the shape of the horse itself, which rose for a brief, quivering instant under me, and for a pulse thump at least I rode in a livery of iridescence, in a mail of exoskeletal facets, wielding a lance of swimming lace, just as the night rode the light and the bones and a sweet, cleansing smoke to ground. <laughs> 